this was going to be five tips, but it's now turned into ten because I just have so many. TV and another day of the blogging basic series. Today I'm going to give you 10 tips to help you write better blog posts. One of the worst things you can do as a blogger is sit down to write your next blog post with absolutely no idea of what you're going to actually write about. You need to have some idea of what you're going to be talking about because you don't want to sit there with that blank uh, so just blinking away at you and you know what it's thinking but the first thing you need to realize is what you're writing about as a whole so what comes under your entire editorial calendar so you'll likely have a few different categories that you're going to cover on a regular basis and that's a great starting point so before we get into it make sure you subscribe to this channel especially this month as I'm uploading one video every single day as part of this exclusive series. My first tip for you is gonna be a game changer. I want you to ask yourself what the key takeaway is for your audience when they read this blog post. So they click through to your blog post, they're getting ready to read it. What's the goal? What's the purpose? The one key thing you want them to take away from it. To make this easier for yourself, you can take the focus away from you and put it on your reader. And this will help you create a solid outline for your blog post, which actually leads me nicely onto tip number two. Now you can create your outline. So it doesn't really matter how you do this. I've got a Google Doc template that I use. I love templates. Whatever you use, Make sure you get all of your thoughts and ideas out of your head as this will help you to organize your outline. Having this in place means you'll always know what comes next and you'll stay focused and on topic too. And it'll actually help you lead into the key takeaway a lot more easily. And what's great about this is that it doesn't just apply to blog posts. It can apply to podcast episodes, videos, but what's important to realize is that your opening is everything. People come and read your blog posts for one of two reasons. One, you've written it. And two, they're interested in the topic that you've written about. So if you don't hook them in right from the start, then they're not going to want to stick around. Your introduction serves one purpose, to keep people reading. So they read the first sentence, then they read the second sentence, then the third and so on. There are loads of different ways you can do this, but I always like to start in a way that's relatable to my audience. So with a story or something like that, or either starting with an interesting fact is good too. Tip number four, don't ever write your blog post directly in the back end of your website. I used to do this. I used to write my blog posts directly into Squarespace and then I'd hit save and for one reason or another it'd crash and then that was it. All of my work was gone. So I would not recommend that. What I use now is Google Docs and the reason why I love Google Docs is because, well, it's free. I can access it from all of my devices and I can share documents with others too. And they auto save, which is just the best. Plus, Google Drive lets you organize your documents however you want. So it's a really great way of staying on track. And a quick note on actually writing the blog post, just write. Don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about editing. You know, you definitely don't want to be editing at the same time that you're being creative. And you know, just write like you. You don't have to take on another persona or write like somebody else. Just embrace who you are and let that shine through in your writing. I always try and write my blog posts and even, you know, create these videos like I'm just talking to a friend over coffee. And it really works well because people can relate to it. Tip number five, your title is everything. Come on, you knew this was coming. I know you did. Your headline is important because it's the one thing that people will see before they click through to your blog post. You know, if someone finds your blog post in Google search, 
that they're going to read the headline to decide whether or not they want to click through or not. So this is where search engine optimization comes into play. And in order to maximize your chances of ranking organically in search engines, your headline needs to describe exactly what your blog post is all about. But it also needs to generate curiosity and intrigue too. You don't want to be giving everything away. You know, think about when you search for something and you look at the title. If it doesn't interest you, then you're not going to click through, are you? And there's also a chance of not meeting expectations because what you don't want to do is create a false headline or a clickbait headline and then for people to come through to your article and think oh well this isn't what i expected and then leave that's what's called a bounce so someone comes to a page on your website they don't like what they see and they leave straight away and this can actually move your pages down in the rankings tip number six break your content up into scannable sections Think about how people read online. Think about how you read. We scan. So don't write your blog post as one huge wall of text. Now I know that sounds obvious, but I see so many blogs that do this and it makes your post so difficult to read. And even if your content is amazing, people won't read it. You need to give your readers a bit of breathing space and that's why you create different sections. So this links us back to creating the outline. It's like if this was a blog post, which it actually is if you go to my blog. So the first section would be, what's the key takeaway? The second section would be create your outline and it's broken up into sections, which makes it more scannable. Tip number seven, include visuals in your blog posts but don't get carried away. Images, videos, infographics, they all help to support the points you're making with your writing. The problem is that you can use too many. So always preview your blog posts before you publish them or schedule them, just to make sure that everything looks okay. Your images need to be relevant and support what you're talking about. But if you use them effectively, it's like we said in the last tip, it can really help to break your content up and make it more scannable. Now, if you want to get results with your blog posts, which I know you do, always include a call to action. So I'd recommend putting this at the end of your blog posts, but you can always sprinkle it throughout your blog posts too, especially if there's something specific you want your reader to download, like a free content upgrade or an opt-in. You don't just have to wait until the very end to mention that. Call to actions are great because they give your audience a natural next step. It's a way they can get involved with you and what you're doing. And the more you can do that, the more it's gonna pay off for you in the long run. You're hopefully giving so much value in your blog posts that you can then ask for something in return. Just don't ask too much. Give, 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 and then ask. Tip number nine, proofread. I'd say out of all of these tips, this one is the most important. Don't just proofread, proofread out loud. I honestly cannot tell you how much of a difference this will make. And I know you might find it a little bit weird to do this, but I catch so many mistakes when I proofread out loud instead of just doing it in my head. Because if there are spelling and grammar mistakes in your blog posts, people are gonna jump on that. And I see bloggers with thousands of followers and their content it's just full of mistakes and it's just it's not great and i know i'm not perfect and i have made mistakes like this in the past but i always proofread out loud to give myself the best chance of putting the best content out there and finally tip number 10 don't strive for perfection spoiler alert there is no such thing as the perfect blog post. If you aim for perfection, then you're just delaying getting your creations out there into the world. You're going to make mistakes. I always make mistakes. The other day, I filmed a video and I thought I'd press record, but I didn't. The point is that you're giving yourself the best chance to put your content out there and you're learning as you go, which is exactly what you're doing right now by watching this video. So take these tips, work through them one at a time, put them into action and get ready to hit that publish button. And even though it might not be 100% perfect, you can always go back and make changes whenever you want. Don't worry about being perfect and would you wanna be perfect anyway? I hope you enjoyed these 10 writing tips. 
If you have a thought or a comment, then please feel free to share that. Maybe tell me what your favorite tip was, or if you have another tip that works well for you, then feel free to share that as well. That's all for today, vloggers. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe for more blogging basics. And remember to keep blogging because there are a lot of people that need you. You just bossed it. I'm